Good morning. Hi, Amy. Hey, I'm good. How are you doing? I'm fine. Morning is looks it, good so far. Is it boiling hot in Germany today? No, it's, it's really lovely. It's 24 oh. degrees or something, so perfect weather. Nice. I like it like that, yeah. Could stay like that like the next month. Oh, really? Nice. No, I mean, that's what oh, I'm you like it. For, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say, you'll be so lucky. I'm coming to Germany if that's good. Oh, that would be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, is it still as hot in, in today UK? cools off a little bit uh today's the last like really hot day and then it goes back to like normal temperatures but yeah it's been amazing wow um, i'm super happy because it's this time of year so last week when i went swimming in the reservoir somebody asked me and they're like how are you going to keep going through winter and i was like no <laughs> like definitely not um but this like short like heat wave has just like raised it right up again. So I reckon there's probably a couple of weeks of swimming. Okay, cool. Uh, um, Graham is on his way, but uh, we'll get started since we're at time. Um, so just a couple of announcements in the read only stuff. Hopefully you've seen them all, but just for easy reference. Oh, one thing I didn't mention on the, uh, the RSUs, there are some AMAs that have been scheduled in for next week. So if you have questions about that, then um, that's the place. Awesome. Uh, so I just wanted to sort of Jav's suggestion uh, about speeding up rollbacks uh, and I guess that I suppose my kind of initial thoughts on this one is I, we probably need to be a little bit careful that we don't just get lots of people now diving in and saying awesome rollbacks and pushing them out. So yeah, I wanted to just think about whether we increase the risk. So um, thanks for adding that, Henry. Do you want to verbalize your, uh, your excellent input? Yeah, so it's still that we, since we um, moved API over two minutes that we saw um, during deployments, short up text drops. And it's still not fully clear where they are coming from. So we spent a lot of time to look into that, trying to <clears throat> pin this down to something, but we couldn't find a real proof until now what is causing this app text mm -hmm. drops. We had several theories um, among them. And I think the latest development in the issue I linked there from yesterday from Matt Smiley was that it might be related to um, database and uh, connections in PG Bouncer, which could be explainable by mm -hmm deployments uh, starting up new pods while the others are still not tiered down. And so we create more connections to the database. That could be something leading to a solution, but I'm not fully sure if we mm -hmm. nailed it down with that yet. But anyways, uh, I think the idea of, of Jarvis is good and we should deploy everything at the same time, at some point in the future, um, at least for rollbacks. But right now I think we should first finish this investigation of why we see these updex drops during deployments to understand what's going on there before we change this. Yeah, it's good to know. Um, like To be clear, like I'm in no rush that we suddenly speed up rollbacks. Like I think they're incredibly quick. Like they are, you know, like more than twice as fast as a hot patch. Um, so already we saved like from this one yesterday, like speeding up the incident investigation is going to be the biggest uh, opportunity. So um, let's not, um, like we will get some rollback improvements as we speed up the pipelines, but let's not rush to, to add in. Like for now, we shouldn't add any risk to rollbacks because we're still in the convince everyone rollbacks are safe and should be widely used and freely used so if there's anything that makes a rollback more risky than it currently is let's not do that for at least this quarter as we build up confidence on it yeah another point on this uh, is that if we want to run all of them together we also all the cluster together is we need to take care about the um, the capacity that we are removing because if we are doing so and at least we need to toggle the the amount of pods that we are allowed to kill during a rollback. It has to be lower than what we do during um, a roll forward because the main difference is that in that case, we are doing cluster by cluster. Here we do everything together. So it's three, four times the amount of... Uh, yeah. yeah, whatever. So. Cool. Okay, great. Good, great input. Um, so let's take care with this one. Like if... if uh, if you see this as coming as an MR, which it may do, let's please 
not uh, merge that in now, get this into an issue, it is going to be something we'll want to optimize in the future. Um, but, uh, but I think for now, it'll, it, it won't mitigate the incident that much faster and it adds some risks. So. Yeah, I just commented, sorry for joining late. I just commented on the thread as well. I'm kind of a little bit, rollbacks, making them on one stage is fine. I'm pretty against doing it for deploys just simply because um, when something goes wrong, it's still really anno slightly annoying for me to like reconverge the clusters and basically unwedge Helm and stuff. And so I'd rather only do it on one or two clusters than on four clusters. Yes. Um, like if something goes wrong, our jo CI jobs just spin and we have to basically kill the process and kill Helm. It, it's, it, it's awful. And that is in the, like talking about the tech debt stuff, like that is in the long trail of tech debt stuff. At one point, I'm actually going to chop that out, chop Helm out for doing the applies and there's the issue there for it. And I would feel more comfortable changing it then when I'm confident that killing our CI, basically detaching the CI jobs from getting things in a bad state. Mm -hmm. um, then I would be more open to the idea personally. Yeah, agree. I think there's a lot of benefit as well of uh, a gradual rollout. Like, you know, yes, we want to go faster, but I think these sorts of changes increase the risk quite substantially and so yeah. like them add in that, work for us. So, yeah. Yeah, good point, actually, from Elysio there. Like, our, our surging would probably cause database pressure and other stuff that we're already seeing as well. So we, we kind of, yeah, we really have to be careful. And um, we, we do need to get on top of that AppDex dip for the, I think it's actually all web service pods. We just never really noticed it because it just doesn't alert. Um, mm -hmm. Matt Smiley's done some really good investigation at the moment. And it actually looks like it might not be what I originally thought it was, which was readiness probes or something. So um, yeah, we need to get a hold of that. and. Um, Cool. Okay. Hey, it, Sorry, go ahead. Did, did you finish? Uh, all I was going to say is, yeah, it, it's it's one of those things actually tricky. I don't know how. It, I I would like as a general thing to be monitoring like, like unless something kills AppDex enough during deploys, we never notice that when deploys happen, the system suffers in some way, shape, or form. And I don't know how we could get more visibility into every time we do a deploy, even if it's not bad enough to cause an alert, just these trends over time of, as we're changing deploys, how do we like holistically look at the health and making sure we're not even just putting pressure or, or making things worse every time we deploy. Um, Can we check deployment metrics instead of the regular SLO? Because they are uh, more uh, stricter. And so it may give us a trend to see what is happening if we had that's, higher that's as low. Yeah, that's possibly what we, sh we should do is like see if we can figure out some way of, yeah, holding our, our, at least the deploys, holding them to a standard that we know we're not causing or even close enough so that just not a problem on top of the already bad problem we have, we've caused by deploys, then puts us into a, you know, an alert. In a similar vein, um, we also have some alerts going to the um, feed general alerts channel, which we don't notice normally. And, and uh, Andrew made the suggestion if we might want to consider to put those Kubernetes related alerts into a special Slack channel so that we would be, that they get more visibility from the delivery, uh, delivery team at least. And I think that might make sense because um, right now we are tuning a lot still on Kubernetes and try to get node pool sizes right. and. In this particular instance, uh, the one of the node pools was saturated and I needed to increase the number of nodes in that one, but we didn't notice because this was going to this feed alerts channel and nobody is paged for that one and nobody is looking to the many alerts that are coming up there. And I opened an issue for that one so we can think about this maybe to get Kubernetes related alerts for saturation, for instance, into a special channel, maybe at least as long as we are still uh, uh, tuning things. Later, we should get this away again because this is adding to alert noise. But um, right now, it might make sense, maybe. Yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm realizing might be going slightly off track here. I'm kind of of two minds in some ways, especially as someone who is an engineer on call and getting paged. I'm almost like part of me wants to make them paging alerts. Like to me, that concept of pushing them into like I don't know about everyone else, but it's really hard. Mm. Slack channel alerts, I just don't find uh, grip me enough, no matter what channel they're in. I, I, I don't know. 
but at the same time paging them and, and like paging so they actually cause an incident and like how are we going to resolve this and in an investigation is good but maybe overkill it, it I, I don't really know what the real answer is and the other thing that was interesting about that capacity alert is so we didn't notice this you know going off the sre handbook and everything you alert on if your customers are experiencing issues so the fact that we were hitting the max number of nodes and serving traffic fine is almost like should we even be raising that because all that's going to do is just consume extra resources unnecessarily maybe do you know what i mean like mm -hmm. and maybe the problem is we still haven't really tuned our services but it, it just it seems interesting to me that we're like, oh, we're at capacity, but according to our customer metrics, we're fine. So, I mean, all of this is just circling around the fact we've got a lot of lot of work to go around tuning, yeah. I guess. That's why I meant like Kubernetes alerts temporarily put into a special channel so we are, have better visibility for tuning because when something is saturated, we know we need to tune something. We maybe don't have an issue, but something to be tuned probably. So that was the idea, but I think we don't need to getting to this right now here because it's a different I've, topic yeah. i've added in your the issue let's say that's the oh, issue thanks. um and uh we can always talk about it in the case demo as well if if we need more uh sync discussion on that but hopefully the issue like i think if it's something that like looks like a reasonably good idea or a reasonably not bad idea we can make a decision quite quickly and try it out so Super. Uh, and then C, is this mostly just for visibility? Like, I think we need to make sure we have a plan for this one, but the, this probably won't be the only time, but we certainly have for this one, a high risk MR coming in from database team. Um, I've asked that they ping release managers before they do the merge. And then what we'll need to do is coordinate this so that we can get it deployed in isolation um, alongside the, like with, with, the, with support from database team. So we should probably, um, should we get an issue open to make the plan? Because I'm kind of aware that there's going to be potentially any one of the four of you, maybe more than one of you involved in actually executing this plan, uh, depending on when the MR comes in. Yeah, I can prepare an issue. Or should I make a, a production? I think it should be a production change because then maybe because this is the official way how we do production changes, right? Which are risky. So, um, um, if if you want, I, I I guess my only concern there is we, whether that will open up a, a new process where we'll have a lot of production change issues going that's, into that's these right. things. That's right. No, I want to avoid uh, that one. No, yeah, then I'm just thinking like of a, a documentation, okay. something that we've normally put in Slack, but given this may take place in the next any day in the next week, right? So I was thinking of an issue just so that we don't have to keep writing stuff in Slack. Yeah, I will create an issue, ping all the um, release managers in it. And I think what Alessio suggested, just I think manually pausing the one um, uh, prepare schedule, mm -hmm. the right way to do this before this gets merged, right? And then merging it, picking it into auto deploy, wait for the tech job to pick it, and then we should be fine to get a pipeline. So right, this is the idea. Just so what? So just go, I've got my understanding clear. This is, the problem is, is this not necessarily, it's the code, it's it's a post-migration or something that's happening that's, yeah, that, that's like a big one that we're expecting to, like, okay. Uh, right and now so, we also have fun, big, bigger the uh, migration running, not a post-migration, I think, but a bigger migration, which we got pinged by the database team. So this is running in Canary right now. So, um, we need to see if we have issues with that, but I don't think so. But this one is really a bigger one, I think. Yes, yeah, uh, so just, to, sep just to, to separate these two out. So this one on the agenda, like, yeah, this one is a bit more risky. So that's why it should go on its own so that if we have any problems at all with that deployment, we'll know straight away it's from that MR. So let's get the issue open so we can work out like exactly the steps. Um, and then this one that we have today. So the reason they're pinging us really is we shouldn't expect problems, but if you see any problems, if you see any incidents around databases, please just pull in the database team. Like we should ping them direct in their Slack channel uh, if we have any problems as, they, as these things go through. Yeah, typically what we see in this occurrence is that a database migration job is failing with some message that it couldn't get a database lock or something. Mm -hmm. And then typically the database team is 
pinging us uh, ahead and saying it's fine in this case to rerun the job because it's idempotent, or if there are some special measures, we can't do this. So, but normally in the last uh, occurrences, nothing happened and just just worked. So it's fine. Cool. Uh, just for curiosity, why is it considered better to disable the auto deploy prepare job and manually pick it? Not manually at the pick level. I think the idea here was that we want to just get this one change in, so that we don't. Um, risk that we also interfere with other merge requests maybe, and, and it's easier to isolate the problems, right? Just but as a special I think measure. Ruben, I was asking like, so there's two approaches for isolating. Is that is that what you're asking? So we've got one is we just stop pulling new branches and add to the one we've got. The other one we can do is lock to an existing um, branch. Is that what you were asking Ruben? Or are you asking like, why are we isolating? Yeah, it was more of a why the isolation is required, but I guess it's just for convenience. Uh, if something goes wrong, you have like just yeah. one thing to concentrate on. That's it, yeah. Yeah, if we have any problems on that deployment, yeah, sorry, that's Henry's next slide. If we have any problems, you'll know it's this, uh, this change. Yeah, but there's also another thing that we may have another problem which is unrelated to this because we we just cut a new branch and we cut a new release. So maybe there's something else that is broken and we cannot roll back. For instance, because there's a post deployment migration, which is also a, a long one. So it yeah. kind of extends the, the window where we are kind of clueless and we don't know what to do. So here we just, at the cost of um, slowing down MTTP for everything else, we just make this a bit safer. Okay, so, um, so what we will be doing is after a successful deploy, we pause the uh, auto deploy prepare job and then pick this MR into that successful deployment. So it's like just yeah. this one new MR is okay. Yeah, yeah that's it, yeah. Uh, Amy, what was the other method of isolation you were talking about? So the other one which we've done in the past is uh, locking onto an, or a specific auto deploy branch. Um, I guess we, we I guess we do that like if we've already created a branch, right? Like we can switch back to running auto deploys off a, off an older branch, um, and pick um, pick this one MR onto onto that branch. Did we automate this with a chatops command, or is it still manual? I think it's reasonably automated. I'd have to read through the documentation. I don't know if we've done it for a while. Um, yeah, because the point is that. If it's still manual, what it used to be, then you still have to pause because otherwise, the next time you do an auto deploy, um, you create a new branch, it will override because it's just an environment variable in the project. Yeah. Okay. So right. you, you can okay. set it back to the previous one and do whatever you want on the old branch, but then uh, it will be overwritten oh, by the, the next uh, schedule. Okay. Yeah, makes sense. Okay. Yeah. So that's going to be the better way. Yeah. But yeah, Rubens, yeah, that's a great point. Yeah. So it will be following a successful deployment pause everything, which is where the coordination of when this thing gets merged is super important. Um, so we can manage this. So we will get pinged on that one. Um, they're expecting to finish the work this week. Um, one thing to add on this is we will still prioritize our 14.3 release over this. So if the dates don't work out, if, if they have a delay and they come in and they're saying it's next, Tuesday or Wednesday or whatever, and we're not comfortable, we won't merge this. 14.3 uh, will be our top priority. So they've chosen this week because this is typically our lower risk week. We're not doing a security release. We're not prepping the monthly, but if they become delayed, we will just push this out some more weeks. Super, uh, is there anything else for this recording? Okay.